you're a D student and you don't even know it. Maybe we've just alerted you to it. Maybe you've just become consciously incompetent. There's four stages of learning. Unconscious incompetence. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know I'm an idiot until someone comes along and says, Brian, let me tell you something. You are a freaking idiot. You are screwing this up. Oh, I didn't realize that. I now am consciously incompetent. But what's the next step? The next step is to take action to do something about it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Brian. Thank you so much for being back with me again this week. And welcome to February. I hope you had a fantastic January. I don't know if it was a dry January. I don't know if it was a damp January. And I don't know if it poured all goddamn month for you. Uh, whether it did or it didn't, whether you fell off track on your New Year's resolutions, whether you were rock solid the entire month and you continue to rock, the only thing you can do is do something about it again today and over and over and over again. It's super cliche to say, but that's all you can control. And so I hope you had a great month. We got 11 left in the year, but it's going to go by very quickly. As I am sure you can still remember the uh, New Year's, I'm sure you can still remember uh, Christmas and the holiday season. You may even be able to remember things like Halloween and Thanksgiving, what you did and how soon or how recent they felt. And so, you know, just a general reminder to you, I said this in my uh, daily email that I send out, I think on February 1st uh, of last week, uh, we got time, but we don't have time. We're going to blink our eyes and it's going to be the summertime. And then we're going to say to ourselves in September, I cannot believe the summer's over already. And we're going to be right into another holiday season. And the days and the weeks, they do feel long, but man, the months and the years, they really do go by fast. I have two young kids that are not so young anymore. I am out of a lot of phases of my life as a father that I'll never be in again. I was just thinking about this as I was walking past the preschool that is across the street from my house and the kids that were riding little tricycles around and run around. And there's like, you know, Elsa playing, um, you know, let it go is playing all day long. Sometimes I can hear it, you know, from my office and it's like, how, how, how fun of the time that was. And, and I wish I had moments of that back. Now I love my life right now. Uh, and you, you enter into different stages. Those of you who are older than me know this already. Those of you who are younger than me, uh, you will learn this as we go, as you go. Uh, but like you, you always sort of long for the the time, the period of time that you did have, you used to have. And man, it just goes by fast. It really goes by fast. So we're in 2024, we're into February. And if you're not where you want to be, just start, just freaking start. Like literally, it's all you have to do. You have to start, you have to have a plan, you have to execute your plan on a regular basis. And you can guarantee that you'll fall off and you have to promise that you'll never, never stop coming back. And that is literally the cheat code. And it's not a cheat code. It's the actual work that you have to do for you to be successful. You can't fail if you never stop trying, if you never stop coming back. I wanna talk about this week uh, in relation to that. I didn't even really plan on going through that little diatribe to start. Uh, I wanna talk a little math with you guys this week. For those of you who are paying attention to me, uh, maybe on a daily basis. If you're not, you can go to the successlift.com and sign up for my daily short inspirational educational email on a regular basis, daily, regular, right? You might, you know, pay attention to me on Instagram or LinkedIn. Uh, those are my two primary social media channels. Uh, it's at Brian Panuzzo on both of those. I would love for you to connect with me there. I do produce content on a daily basis on both of those channels. I email daily. The podcast is weekly. A lot of places for you to get a little bit more of me if you're so inclined. And I appreciate that. I appreciate everyone who has subscribed to the new YouTube channel. If you haven't, I would love it if you did that quickly. If you're checking it out on YouTube, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. How do I look? Do I Am I doing my hair the right way? Uh, you know, anything, constructive criticism, come at me, come at me. Okay. Uh, but I want to talk math with you all this week, all right? You guys, if you've been paying attention to me for any time, especially my clients, my clients know 
that I love math. My brain tends to work in, in two different distinct ways. Uh, one is sports. All right. I played basketball for a long, long time. I've been a sports fan. I've been around the game. I've been around athletics for a long time. I still think in terms of basketball and athletes and sports concepts and locker room analogies and things like that. The other is business. I was a Wall Street bro for 20 years. I was on a trading desk for a long time. Uh, and so, you know, my brain tends to think of things from, you know, those two lenses, right? I see things from those two lenses. Uh, I think mathematically that my brain works like that. Don't ask me to think artistically. I struggle with that. Okay. And so I like to break things down. I talk a lot about compound interest. I talk a lot about this notion of inflation that we're going to incur in our lives. Things will get more expensive over time. If you don't do anything about your health today, your chronic disease and your healthcare bills and the costs that you have to pay down the line will absolutely increase. You don't do anything about your marriage today, those divorce attorneys and cutting a check for your ha for half your net worth will be much more expensive down the line. And so another concept I like to think about is just compartmentalizing every single day of the week because for many busy professionals, and that is who I work with, that is who I speak to, because I still am one, but I was one inside of corporate America for 20 years. You know, we grind from Monday to Friday. We race till the finish line. Maybe that's 5 p.m. Maybe that's hopefully uh, 11 a.m. in the summertime and you hit the golf course. And quite frankly, maybe it's Saturday, you know, afternoon or evening or into Sunday or all, you know, all seven days of the week, every once in a while in our professional careers. But usually we have a little bit more time to ourselves and a little bit of a time to breathe on the weekends. And that isn't even just a corporate America thing. That's an everybody thing. We've been conditioned in our society to take it a little bit easier on the weekends. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not what I'm going to promote. I'm not going to promote that you should go run marathons and do triathlons on your weekends so that you can be some sort of weekend warrior and savage. What I do want to talk about though is this notion of like a lot of times people tend to let things go to shit on the weekends. And like I have a check-in process with my clients. We stay accountable to each other uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and on a week-to-week -week basis. And one of the questions I ask in the accountability check-in that every one of my clients does on Sunday is, you know, rate your week. How was your week? Were you locked in? You know, were you 90 to 95% of the way there? Is, that, is it that last 5% that we need to deal with, you know? And then the next one, I believe, if I'm looking, if I'm thinking from, from, from memory, next one is like Monday to Thursday, I was great. The weekend, not so much. All the way down to, I poured a drink just to fill out this form, all right? I try to have a little humor with my people. And so a very common response on those check-in forms is, I was locked in Monday through Thursday. The weekend, not so much. And so I always think about this from the perspective of like, well, I get it. I get that because that's how I used to live my life. And when you think about it, you know, I wanted to, I, 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 I titled this episode, you're a D student and you don't even know it. And here's why. Okay. Because most people don't really do this math. They don't think about what the actual numbers are. And when you just break things down mathematically, you start to understand. And I, and I've actually heard and seen when it's face to face, a light bulb in my client's eyes, heads, eyes. Does a light bulb go off in your eyes or in your head? I don't know. I've seen that light bulb go off. I've seen them do the real time analysis and say, well, shit, I had never really thought about it that way. And so here's how I lay it out, right? Every day of our week is 14%. You take 100%, you chop it up, divide it by seven, you get like 14 and change, or I think it's 13 and change actually. Let's call it 14%, okay? So every day, 14%, 14 times seven gets you to a right around 100. And that means that every day can have its own equal impact on your performance. Now, most people do a pretty darn good job on Mondays, 
Tuesdays and Wednesdays. A lot of people do a pretty good job on Thursdays. Sometimes we have Thursday night dinners, happy hours, or whatever. Fridays, we may get a little bit loose and things may start to go sideways by Friday evening when maybe we kick back and have a few drinks after work. We go out on a date night. We do something fun uh, around our local communities, maybe our neighborhoods, maybe there's a dinner party, maybe the kids are getting together so the parents get together, maybe the games are on Friday night, so we kick back and we have a bottle of wine or we start to drink some beers. Saturday, of course, there's football on, there's sports on, and it's on for a lot of us. Also, it's the weekend, and so we may tend to have our nutrition lapse a bit, where you might be in a groove eating a certain thing during the week, Monday through Friday even. Saturday and Sunday can tend to get a little bit loose as well. You don't have the same consistency in your routine. You may or may not hit the gym because for some people, that might be a time where you absolutely have to get to the gym. For others, you may be hungover, you may be tired, you may sleep in, you may enjoy not waking up as early. You're out of your routine and you don't exercise either. And so this message really is to, you know, the people, look, at the end of the day, most people aren't throwing away every single moment of their weekend. If you were, I don't think that I would be the guy that you'd be paying attention to because I probably wouldn't have annoyed you to the point where you would have left already. If you are though, you are clearly throwing away Saturday. You are clearly throwing away Sunday, if not most of Sunday, and you're probably throwing away a little bit of Friday, if not all of Friday. And let's just say you're throwing just Saturday and Sunday away. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Brian, I don't throw it all away. I just have like, I just start cracking beers at four o'clock in the afternoon and I eat whatever the heck I want for lunch. Uh, and then we go out to dinner and I'm drinking all day. And then it's Sunday fun day, but it's really only like 75% or 65% of the weekend. Okay. That's fine. Let's just take 65 to 75% of the weekend. All right. Saturday and Sunday. That doesn't make you a D student yet. That probably puts you around 80%. So you're at a B, a low B, a B minus. Okay. Now I guarantee you that the rest of your week is not perfect. I know when people say I was great on Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday, I believe them, but were you? Were you really perfect? Did you, did you nail everything from Monday through Thursday? And so really quickly, I think you can see that we can start to accumulate because maybe it was you decided to go get you know chicken parm sandwiches with everybody else at the office on Tuesday because you felt that pressure. You had a few drinks on Wednesday after work and then you just kind of like took a couple bites of some appetizers, came home you know, miss dinner and then ate like a few shitty low quality foods on Wednesday. Like no harm, no foul, no big deal if it's a one time occurrence for the week. But it's like when you stack Tuesday lunch, Wednesday happy hour, and then eat pretzels and potato chips uh, and shit in the pantry on Wednesday night when you get home. And then Friday night, you have a bunch of cocktails and maybe eat pizza with the kids. And then Saturday afternoon, you start drinking in the afternoon and go out for a couple's dinner. And then it's Sunday fun day. And all of a sudden, you've accumulated at least three and maybe, maybe even four days or more of your week. And so four times seven is 28. 28% less 100 gets us into some shitty grades real quick right? Real shitty grades real quick. And so if you can start to understand some of the math that we're doing here, and if you can say like, okay, 14% of my week is every single day. Every day is 14%. So if I throw away Friday, I throw away Saturday, that's 28%. If I throw away half of uh, Sunday or vice versa, I throw away half of, half of Friday and all of Sunday, right? Now, we get to 35% real quick. And if I'm not perfect, if I'm not perfect the rest of the week, I'm at best a 65% out of 100. And so that's where I think people, as I now talk this out even further, 
I think most of you are failing and you don't even know it, let alone a D student. But let's give the benefit of the doubt to a lot of people and say that you're a D student and you don't even know it. And so maybe we've just alerted you to it. Maybe you've just become consciously incompetent. There's four stages of learning. Unconscious incompetence. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know I'm an idiot until someone comes along and says, Brian, let me tell you something. You are a freaking idiot. You are screwing this up. Whoa, I didn't realize that. I now am consciously incompetent. Well, what's the next step? The next step is to take action to do something about it. And that's where you shift from conscious incompetence to conscious competence. And so what are some things that you can do? Because I am a, a very much an action-based person. I talked last week about my love for uh, taking action and why I enjoyed uh, that therapist, Phil Stutz, because he gives you action-based tools to do something about agency in your life. Agency will change your life. You are not a victim to all the circumstances around you. You absolutely have control over what you put in your mouth, how much you move your body, and many, many, many other things. But typically we give away our control to things that are fully within our control. I like action steps. So what are some things that you can do as a busy professional who maybe doesn't want to be perfect on the weekends? And I, I get it. I get it. You, you should want to be better than you are. And I would argue that your weekends actually mean more because you actually have more time on your hands. And there is less things that are outside of your control. Yes, I understand if you're a young parent like me, you might be on baseball fields or in basketball gyms or traveling around. I'm in the Uber driver stages of my parenthood right now. Uh, those of you with older kids know exactly what I'm talking about. You literally are spending the entire weekend, every weeknight driving from one activity to another, one practice to another, carpooling from this to that. Uh, it can get a bit hectic in our lives. Just as much as those younger years, for any of my younger parents, you guys are sleep deprived, you're changing shitty diapers, uh, and you're kind of locked in your house. Like you'd be like, oh, well, that sounds great. I get to go out. Yeah, it is great until it's like all you do, until you leave your house at six in the morning on Saturday and you don't return until 9.30 p.m. I've had many weekends like that, many, many weekends. And so let's take some action because my programs are all about action-based. All right, we take action. And that's why I believe I get great results. I know I get great, get great results with people. That's why I'm so successful and I resonate with people inside of corporate America because it's like, well, I'll just show you what I did. I, you, don't have to, you don't have to believe me. Just, just do what I ask you to do. Don't believe me, in fact. Just judge after the fact because I'm showing you exactly how I changed my life in the seat that you're sitting in. And so you can't tell me about your schedule. You're not... I mean, outside of very, very few circumstances, you are not special. You may feel like your problems are unique, but they are not unique. You are a unique person, but you don't have unique problems. We all, if you chunk up, we all have the same root problems in a few different areas. Ultimately, they boil down to you not feeling like you have enough time in a lot of different areas. So what can you do? What can you do? Well, first of all, you can actually own Monday through Thursday right? Like 90% of Monday through Thursday. And so that means probably skipping that chicken parm. That means getting a little bit uncomfortable on Tuesday when everybody on the desk says, we're going to get chicken parms or we're ordering chicken parms. What do you want? And you're gonna, you got to go and I'm going to get a big ass salad today. And then they're going to go, it's soft as fuck, Brian. Why are you doing that? And then you're going to say, because I don't want to look like you, you fat bastard. All right. And I say that with a smile. Hopefully if you're getting your balls busted, proverbial balls busted. If we're talking to any females, you could bust back. Don't be a victim inside of the culture of your office and allow people to control you and your decisions. Snap back. They're going to be snapping turtles, snap back, or just put your head down, do what you do, get your results like I did. And then three months later, they look at you, they look at them, they look at you, they look at them, and they quietly go, Hey man, 
can you um next time you're going for a salad can you just include me because i want to i'm trying to eat a little bit differently and hey th- those uh those lunges that you're doing and, th- and that band that you have under your desk and you kind of do that stuff with your shoulders and your back and you like kind of use these bands and stuff like does that help your back because my fucking back is killing me it's been killing me forever and like i get up and i'm in so much pain i guarantee you will have people confide in you maybe even the same people who were busting your chops three months later and so put your head down put your blinders on and do what you need to do especially when it's fuel time. I talk about fuel and experience all the time. When it's fuel time, do not waste your experience bullets. Please, God, do not waste your experiential bullets. Handle your business. Save your experience for people that actually matter, not a jerk off that is peer pressuring you from the next row or a cubicle three or four down, all right? That person is always going to be miserable They likely are threatened by you wanting to change. We shine a light on other people's inabilities to achieve the things that they want when we change. And you have to understand that they are going to have a reaction. Sometimes it's going to be from people very close to you. You are showing them that they are inadequate. You are going to bring up insecurities in their own selves. Just be ready for that. Own those moments. Do not let those moments take control of you. Yes, I know you might have to travel for business, but that does not mean that you have to get completely off track. In fact, I can take you through a protocol to have you stay on track 100% of the time when you travel. For my clients who choose to, we do that. It's very, very simple. Very simple. It's a resource I provide inside of my executive program and my company wellness program and to all of my individual one-on-one clients. We always talk about what's the purpose of the trip. Is it just business or is there some pleasure involved? Is there some connection with a customer involved? Do you want to be out late? Do you want to have those drinks? How do you want to feel when you get home? That is a big driver of the actions that we take. So fast forward, if you're gonna, gonna, this is a little hack for you. If you you have a trip coming and you're gonna go away and, and wanna feel a certain way or worried about your behavior, fast forward to the return. How do I feel? What am I proud of? What have I accomplished? Well, that gives you the state that you desire, the results that you desire. That's the cheat code. You already know. Then you just have to back up and reverse engineer your actions, your activity, your responsibilities. Are you finding a gym? When are you working out? Are you going on walks? What restaurants are you going to? What are you ordering at those restaurants? I'm pretty sure the restaurant menu does not change on Wednesday before you've left for your dinner on Friday. So why not look at the restaurant menu on Wednesday and plan what you're going to get? Why not know exactly where you're going to eat breakfast? You already know when your meetings are, so you could schedule gym workouts. Don't have time for the gym? Cool. Push-ups and split squats in your room until you start to sweat and breathe heavy then take a break, then do it again, then take a break, then do it again. 20 minutes later, you'll be sweating. Jump in the shower, get on with your damn work day. There's a lot of ways to get this done. Big ass salad for lunch. Fuck Chipotle. Stop letting some of the simple things get in the way during execution times. And so we handle our business when we're supposed to. All right. Now on our weekends, you're not getting up to get to the office early. So get up early and Do some of the things for yourself personally. If you have young kids like I do, once the kids are up and their schedule start, your day is at the mercy of theirs. So get up early on the weekends. It's a absolute cheat code for your life. Because number one, it's going to require you to shut it down at a reasonable time on Friday and Saturday night. If you have an early workout on Saturday and Sunday morning, you can't get after it that badly on Friday and Saturday night. So it puts a governor on you. Then you get up and you get your shit done. And so if the the kid's day starts at 8 a.m., but I get up at 5 and I finish my day, my my personal care time at 7, we're good. I can be a servant the rest of the day. I don't have to worry about their schedule. So get up and get after it early. Control what you're eating for the first 7 to 8, 9, 10 hours of your day on Saturday and Sunday. Maybe even on Friday too. 
Like you don't need to eat pancakes and waffles for breakfast. You're an adult. Eat some eggs. Have a protein shake. Have some vegetables. Eat a reasonable lunch. Maybe delay the start of the beers from 2 o'clock to 4.30 or 5.30. Maybe have a, a non-alcoholic or two in the, in the late afternoon like I do when I sit down. Look, guys, I'm human. I sit down to watch a game and the trigger for me is like, I got to get, get a beer. I'm watching a game. But then I'm like, well, it's 4 o'clock. If I have a beer at 4 o'clock, I'm probably going to have 2 or 3. If I have 2 or 3, I'm not the type to be in danger to drink from 4 to to the start of dinner at 7.30. So like, I'm not at risk of like accumulating 10 beers. If you are, you shouldn't start at four. But like, I'll have two or three and then like, I'll, get, I'll be tired, I'll be lazy, I might start to snack on food. And so for me, like a four o'clock on a Saturday, I grab a, a non-alcoholic beer. Like if I'm gonna drink later, if I'm just gonna have a beer, I'll have a beer. If I wanna drink later, I grab a non-alcoholic. I'm a big fan of Athletic Brewing, by the way. I'm not affiliated with them yet. Um, but I recommend that to all my companies. I recommend it to my executive programs. I recommend it to my individual clients. I'm, I'm a fan of the taste. There's a lot of great non-alcoholic beers out there. Try the one, the one that you like, stick to the one that you like, but I might have one of those to tide me over, give me the taste of having it, having a drink while I'm watching a game. And then I go out and I have my old fashions or my wine or whatever. Start to hack the beginnings of your day. I can, I can lay out a scenario on any personal vacation, on any business trip, and on any normal Saturday and Sunday where I can get you 70% of the way through the day. I can get your workout in, I can get most of your steps in, I can have you eating clean, and I can have you enjoy the rest of your 30% of your day. And so if we do that on Saturday and Sunday, and maybe even Friday, 30%, 30%, 30%, that's 90% of one day, one day not three full days. So I can get us to, it's 90% of 14 is about 12. I can have you shooting 88 out of 100 from the foul line real quick. And I'm telling you that won't even feel like sacrifice. Now, if you want to actually push yourself to sacrifice a little bit, I can get you into the 90s super fast, super fast. So that's how I think about things. I think about things from this mathematical perspective of what percentage of my day do I have to own in order to own my week? Well, owning my week for me, that threshold is 90%. If I'm not, if I'm below 90, I did not own the week. Now, it doesn't mean I always, sh the goal is always 90. I go on a golf trip and it's like, all right, I'm going to be like 60, 40, 50, 50. Okay. Now leading up to the golf trip, I'm fucking 100, zero coming out of the golf trip. I'm 100, zero. So I'm averaging out over the course of a couple of weeks, more like 90, 10, but I can get you know, a 90, 10 weekend with my eyes closed. And so I would encourage you to think about how can you clean up some of these moments? We're all looking for that home run. We're all looking for that deep Hail Mary down the sideline. And you've heard this analogy before, if you've been here long enough, if you just hand the ball off up the middle and run three yards, every single fucking play, you will never give the ball up. You will get a first down on every possession. You will control the clock. You will score on every possession. You will likely win every game. I don't see how you couldn't win every game if you control the clock for that long and score a touchdown on every single possession. You also will have a fourth and one on every single set of downs. And more importantly, and more impactfully, your own fans would probably boo the shit out of you because it'd be boring as hell. But that is what is required in order for you to be successful, consistency. It doesn't have to look like four runs up the gut every single time. We could play action every once in a while. We could throw the deep ball a little bit. We get the fans ooing and eyeing. Maybe we hit a couple. Maybe we throw a few incomplete. We go right back to our bread and butter, up the gut, up the gut, up the gut. So think about how you can clean up some of the moments during your week that typically are just those hand the ball off and get three yard moments and stop trying to hit so many goddamn home runs. If you've been paying attention to me a little bit, you, you may have felt like I've gone sour on things like cold plunges and stuff. I, I don't, again, I don't have one currently. My freezer broke, but like, I mean, I've been cold plunging for years. So like I, I get the value of it, but like I'm starting to understand that that's not hard. Jumping in cold water is not hard. Even if you don't like it, 
Once you do it like 10 times, you know what to expect. Once you know what to expect, that's it. What's hard is showing up every single day and doing the things that you need to do on a regular basis for the other 23 hours and 57 minutes. You can suck anything up for three minutes. I don't care how cold the water is. You can suck it up. Can you put in the work in those other minutes? Can you do the things that are required? If you can do that, I guarantee you, you're going to make massive amounts of progress. But the progress comes in these little moments. Clean up the little moments. Go from being a D student to a C student, from a C student to a B student, and then you can get A's. No one usually gets A's right from getting D's. So if you are a D student, how I describe this, figure out how you can clean up one day per week, get you up into the C's, then go from there. If you found this helpful, please share it with somebody. I appreciate you guys so much. Let me know what you think of the show on YouTube. Leave a comment, leave a review, leave a rating. Thank you so much. See you next week.